Hello, and uh, thanks for joining us for another uh, featured podcast. This week, we're hanging with the guys from Seeing Snakes, and we'll be checking in with them in just a, a couple minutes. Uh, but just want to remind you, uh, we are uh, streaming 24-7, and you can download our free apps and take uh, yourlocalnote.com with you anywhere you go and just go to the respective stores, type in YLN, download it for free, and you've got yourlocalnote.com right on your phone. Also, don't forget, we've got a weekly newsletter that Mike does. You can get that by just sending a request through contact at yourlocalnote.com. Also, uh, we do a weekly video update. Uh, YLN update is what we call it, and you can check that out. So a whole bunch of stuff happening on yourlocalnote.com, but let's get to seeing snakes. The first song we're going to play is Madman on yourlocalnote.com. The song is called Man Man. It's from uh, Seeing Snakes and their EP, which is called Jake Goes to Portland. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. All right, introduce yourselves and what you do with the band, and uh, give a, a shout-out to people who are not here. Um, well, I'm Tim. I sing a lot of the stuff and generally make an ass out of myself. Um Tim plays guitar as well. Uh, well. Uh, Ryan and I play the drums. Apparently I'm bad with words. <laughs> also not with us tonight, our bass player, Dan, and another guitarist, Ryan. So there's four of us. All mm-hmm. right, let's uh, start quickly with the Madman. Um, who wrote the song and what is it about? Um, I wrote this one. Um, at the time, it was. Uh, I have really bad issues with insomnia. Okay. Um, and that kind of triggered what the song's about, like when you're up... Two, three o'clock in the morning. Sure. Even if you get up at, have to get up at six for work. Mm-hmm. Um, and just kind of where my mind wanders, you know. So in this case, it was like, well, should I be doing more of my life? There's a lot of stuff I did do. Why am I not doing this stuff anymore? Um, and that's kind of like where like my headspace was at the time. Like, you know, I kind of a lot of the stuff kind of comes from at least with the stuff I write kind of comes from like. Basically, whether or not I'm a nut job, um, you know, I, 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 you know, like 
it, so you're questioning your sanity is basically it, what it comes down to. Yeah, like I do you I'm, fit in with the rest of society? Yeah, and it's more along the lines of like I, I have a really hard time focusing on things. I'm very scatterbrained a lot. Do you think um, insomnia has a little bit to do with that? Very much so. Okay. Very much so. But so. that could be a, a, a good creative outlet because you're a little maybe mentally tired, so you're not going to have restrictions because you're like, ah, eh, what the hell? Yeah, and it's it's kind of like. Where I do when I do my best thinking, that's why I do most of my writing and stuff like that is when I'm not sleeping. Exactly. Yeah, I'm kind of tattered and worn and exhausted. So whether or not it's good writing, who knows? But I mean, like, that's why I do the majority of it. Okay. So that's when it's the most fluid. All right. Uh, Let's uh, take a step back. And uh, the name of the band, Seeing Snakes, how did that come about? And how did you guys (laughs) get together? Well, um, at the time, we uh, we were actually uh, myself, Brian, and Jake, who is uh, mentioned on the, uh, the EP title there. Uh, we were in a different kind of lineup, a little bit more poppier, a little less polished uh, group with uh, some other members, and it was uh, a little bit of a train wreck. And uh, okay. we kind of wanted to <laughs> move away from that. It had a different name that we weren't really too into. Um, so we were just like, well, what can we name it? And I don't know whose idea it was, but we looked up old timey terms for being drunk. Okay. Um, where we're like, okay, so this works, I guess. Uh, probably doesn't say too much about us as people if we're like, well, we're going to represent ourselves with <laughs> seeing being snakes. I've never heard that term. Yeah, apparently it was like an old timey term for when you're so loaded that all you see is the trails of light when you're ah, wobbling yeah, back and okay. forth. It was a time we were sitting in the studio, we were recording this EP, and we knew we didn't want to be that old band anymore. We wanted right. to kind of reinvent ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we were just sitting on our smartphones, thumbing through old terminology and weird little catchphrases right, and right. anything that we thought would stick. And for some reason, it just kind of hit us. It stands out. And through every band we've been in before, it's always such a process to come up with that name that's going to identify the band, the music, the people in the band. It's the worst process ever, because you always so, think you hit gold, and then you find out somebody else has it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you got to Google it, make sure nobody has it, look right. it up on uh, Facebook and all that good stuff. So when we hit it, it all just kind of clicked. Like, yeah, Seeing Snakes, that's going to be the name. And it, it's, uh, never looked back from there. Sounds good. Now, you guys played in other bands together? Um, very briefly, we're in kind of like, uh, almost like a prototype version of where we are now and not okay. for a very long period of time. Um, now what happened is all pretty much around the same time, everyone that's in the current lineup and even Jake, we were all basically in bands that were dissolving at the same time, but playing oh, okay. shows together. Okay. Um, in my previous band, I really had to light a f- fire under the air guy's asses to get them to do stuff. So mm-hmm. I was fairly uh, frustrated. Frustrated, huh? yeah, because it was like pulling teeth. Ian McGang would to play shows or go on the road or anything right, like that. Right. Um, and really, I, I, th- I kind of got the vibe of the same thing from the air guys. Um, and we, you know, we all have had beers together. We've all made a lot of terrible jokes together, and we've all played shows together. So it, it kind of made sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of how we all started kind of getting together. Okay. And then when was the decision to say, okay, this is it. This is going to be a band. Um, so it's because it sounds like you guys were part of other bands, but still sort of getting together before you made the decision of, well, we're going to pull the plug on the others and, and form this. Yeah. Well, it was actually like, well, let's book a show and see what happens. And okay, hope to God that we're prepared and kind of. Yeah, it was um, about a year and a half ago that Tim and I first started playing together. Uh-huh. And I had filled in on drums in his previous band. Okay. So we, we knew we worked well together. I've known him for... Maybe 12 uh, years or so. Yeah. Goes way back to playing shows in his parents' basement when we were in high school. Right, so. right. Kind of lost touch for a few years, and then through music, got back in touch. and So well, we so, knew we would work well together. We so, just had to find it, the other guys to complete the puzzle. But uh, And the other guys you knew for a while, too, just from other bands mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So that, that sort of makes it easier, because sometimes when you're forming a new band and you don't really know each other, uh, it sort of, you have a learning experience of the give and take of, okay, they like this, they like that, you know, so it makes it, uh, I guess, it moves slower. Yeah, and, you know, um, it, this we all kind of gelled pretty quickly since... Um, <sighs> Uh, we all have very similar tastes, uh, but they're all kind of sparse. Like, I like a lot of, like, uh, you know, a lot of old soul, a lot of old 
reggae, ska, a lot of old punk stuff. Um, our one guitarist, uh, Ryan, listens a lot, of, really is into like really weird, like avant garde jazz sometimes, um, a lot of blues stuff. Um, Brian's probably a little bit more along the lines of like where I am. You know, he he listens a lot more punk rock stuff, and uh, Dan's kind of all over the place. I think it just wherever it takes him. Listens a lot of like hardcore and stuff like that, and um, so we all bring our a little bit of stuff to the table. For, but for whatever reason, there was just like this little spark that kind of made things well uh, gelled together well. So, so, did you have an idea of where you wanted to take your next band, or did you just you know? Get these four guys together and see what happened. Uh, a little bit of the latter. A few years ago, we were playing. My old band was playing a show with uh, one of my friends' uh, bands from Georgia, and I was talking to his wife. And this this band does ridiculous stuff that I don't even like mentioning. Like they like parts of their bodies on fire. They no. write. <laughs> they've done. They make out with each other. I don't know. It, they do. So a you lot didn't of, want to join up with them? No. Well, I thought about it, but no. Um, but it, the weird thing is, like, the singer stopped doing that band for a while and started trying to do something serious, and it didn't stick. And part of it was he was his wife was just like, well, it's, he's real, and you wouldn't expect it from this guy because he writes really silly songs like "Why Do Fat Kids Like Metallica?" That's a title of one of their songs. <laughs> and he tried to write like all this stuff because he actually, for whatever reason, loves Tom Petty. Yeah. You know, I'm a fan too, but like he was like, I'm gonna do stuff that I'm really into. So he did three albums of something that was a real passion project, and it just never had any legs. Mm-hmm. Um, part of it was he was just like, well, it's not what really naturally comes out. So he was, for- he was forcing it. Yeah, himself. he was forcing it because yeah. it's what he likes, but it's not really what comes. It's not how he what he's able to easily express. Mm-hmm. Um, so when it came time to see what direction I wanted to go in, I wanted to play music that didn't seem like a chore. Because that's the last thing I want to be doing anyway, because it's what I do to get away from, you know, my sure. nine to five and all that sort of stuff. Right. So, you know, if, if something seems like during the writing process, like it's just not working, it just doesn't happen. So when did you, how long did it take to get the five songs that are on this EP? Most of those are pretty quick. Actually, one of the songs, one of the songs me and Brian started uh, playing before my our previous bands broke up. Um, we were just kind of tinkering around, jamming, and then that kind of just stuck. Jake had uh, written uh, Matumbo quite a while, probably a couple months after he started the band. And Gordon Street was probably, I'd say probably about six to eight months after Jake started playing with us, we mm-hmm. had everything kind of uh, set in stone for those songs. Got it. All right, what about Hit the Skids? That's going to be the next song we'll feature on the podcast. Tell us a little bit about that song. I think that was just kind of more of a stream of consciousness uh, kind of deal where it's, we just wanted to write something kind of really fast, really ballsy. You know, just kind of crank one out, see what would happen. Lyrically, it's kind of just, again, whatever came to mind, pen to paper, just ran with it. And it's just about people taking a, an accusatory tone with you and trying to, you know, for lack of a better term, appease them, try to yeah. find out what exactly they expect out of you. All right. All right. Well, we're sitting with Seeing Snakes, and they have an EP here called Jake Goes to Portland. The next song is called Hit the Skids, and you're listening to YourLocalNote.com. Yeah. 
That has hit the skids. They are seeing snakes. And this is your localnote.com. Uh, let's delve more into the songwriting process. You mentioned earlier that you write a lot of the songs late because of insomnia, two or three. So what happens first? Does the, the lyrics for you happen first and then the music or vice versa? Uh, music first. Okay. Pretty much always. I, I think it's easier to express a, a, a tone or feeling uh, in a much more guttural sense mm-hmm. for me and then kind of lay the words out over top of that. It, it's just more of, uh, again, going back to where my head is at the time. It, it's where I'm going to be, you know, playing a little bit faster, a little bit slower, trying to make uh, something abrasive or not abrasive. Mm-hmm. I would definitely say, you know, usually when it comes out first, it's a matter of breaking out a guitar and going with that. A lot of times, it'll just be an incomplete riff. I'll bring it to the band. We'll actually set a structure to the song, and then we'll write the lyrics later. Okay. But, you know, uh, for the most part, it's always going to be the actual music itself first. Right. And is it always you bringing riffs to the to Uh-oh. the band, or how, how does most of the songs mm-hmm. come about? Uh, or is it all different? Well, Jake did a lot of the writing when he was with us, and so now that he's uh, moved away... Tim's been doing a lot of the writing, but everyone's free to bring their own ideas to the table. And a lot of our good ideas come when we're just warming up at the beginning of a practice session Mm. and just playing whatever feels comfortable or maybe something we are working on at home. Mm -hmm. Rarely I'm the one that starts this. I usually let the guys with the strings do their thing. And uh, once there's a good riff or a bass line that I feel I can lock into, that's when I bring in the drums and kind of complete the structure there. Yeah, and I think uh, more recently, uh, more, a lot more of her stuff has been actually written by her newer bass player, A, because he's a monster, but um, <laughs> B, like his, he felt really creatively stifled in his old, uh, where he was before. So now that he's able to actually think outside of the box and playing bass lines or someone else, he's actually doing, working a lot more of the creative aspect of things. So he You find that table. you're all more open to anything, or is there any sort of uh, delegation uh, the, band. the only rule I was ever given was no ska. No that's, ska? That's that, that's, like, that was one of uh, your that's, influences. That's what, yeah, that's one of my influences, but... Uh, who made so much, that rule? <laughs> bass player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is weird, because, you know, like, I bass, feel like there's yeah. a lot more moving bass lines in that, but yeah. he's just he, uh, iron-fisted that one down. He's like, no! <laughs> so... Yeah, I think we all have a pretty good idea of the direction where the band's going and where the band has been. So we all know if there's an idea that's totally out of left field, it's probably not going to stick. Mm-hmm. So usually anything that's brought to the table is more or less within the realm of what we've been doing. Okay, now is that true lyrically as well? I mean, has there ever been uh, some lyrics that have been turned away or... Half the time, or I don't even know about. what his lyrics are until we get into the <laughs> studio. And I'm like, oh, that's what he's singing there. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. in practice, the PA is not quite as loud as everything. And we Especially try to get the levels the right. But yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone really sings anything too far off the cuff that it really kind of you know irks anyone. You know, so I, I, I think most of the stuff is stuff we all relate to on one level or another. So because that, it's just kind of always worked. So yeah, there hasn't really been any conflict in terms of like lyrical content or anything like that. Okay, so the name of the EP is uh, Jake Goes to Portland. Mm-hmm. Let's there's a story behind that, so let's go through that. Yeah, it, it was a bit of a bummer. Like uh, our guitarist at the time, Jake, he uh, and it really comes through. I think it's definitely evident in uh, the one one of the songs he wrote in there called uh, Matumbo. Uh, actually, both songs probably wrote in there. He wrote Matumbo and their song called Gordon Street. He, I think, he just was one of those people that he kind of got burned down in Philadelphia. You know, he felt like he did as much as he could here, and it was just time to move. Is he originally from Philadelphia? I think Delaware. Yeah, he's, okay, he's from the area. Yeah, but he's the from area. the area. Okay. But yeah, he, uh, you know, him and his uh, girlfriend, they uh, decided it was time to move. He put a date down, got a deposit on a, a nice apartment out in Portland, and he just was like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save my money up. I'll have enough money to find a job. He did, he did find one. Is he going to continue to play music? Here he is. Um, the first thing he did when he got out there was buy a, a PV combo. Okay. So like... <laughs> He yeah. was kind of sad he couldn't take his his big Marshall cabinet with him. Okay. So. Yeah, he went. He had like a pretty much like a just a big music yard sale before he left. So mm. a lot of people got their hands on some nice stuff before he uh, threw what was left in his Yaris and or uh, was it Yaris or the it's a Prius uh, Prius and yeah. drove across okay. country. It's a small wow. Toyota. Yeah. Wow. So okay, doing this album. Have you had experience recording albums with other bands? Yes. Sometimes good, sometimes okay. not so good. <laughs> so with this album, you all brought your past experiences with you. Did you produce this yourself, or did you have this produced someplace else? Well, we worked with Eric Victor at Creep Records, and uh, he gave us some good input. 
which was great because like I recorded other places so the, and the guys just were, didn't know the sound we were going for right. or whatever and he was able to pick it apart you know uh, give us pretty much advice that might seem a little harsh at times but uh, <laughs> gave us a swift, swift kick in the ass especially because I was playing bass on that and I'm not a bass player okay um, so he gave me a couple really firm pointed po- pieces of advice <laughs> how now how did you hook up with him uh, did, did you know him beforehand or how did you guys uh, make the decision that we're gonna you know record the album with him one of my friends bands recorded actually a couple of my friends bands recorded with him over a stretch of a couple of years um, so you knew him yeah I knew him I talked to him a lot I go he has a record shop in Piazza so I go there every now and then went there on record store day a couple of years ago bought some stuff and he's always been friendly to me uh my wife, uh, for a while, was doing uh, roller derby, and I've seen him at a couple of their events every okay. now and then. So, yeah, so I just had run-ins with them, and you know, listening to my friends' albums, they they sounded great. I knew he was going to get the vibe for what we were doing. Okay, so I approached him about it, and so he had a lot of input into what you guys did. Mm-hmm. You're happy with the way it sounds. It sounds great. Anything that you've taken from this that you're looking ahead, going, okay, we did this this time, but we're going to do it differently next time. Well, um, part of uh, one thing I'd really like to bring to the table because, like I said, I'm not much of a straight bass uh, a bass player. I, you know, I'm more happy being a guitarist. So, on the new uh, next time we record, which hopefully will be soon, because the two new guys, I really want to hear what they uh, they produce in the studio. Mm-hmm. I really want to see because they they just really produce a wall sound when they play live, and they're both really, really, really technical and just sound awesome so the the only thing i really wanted to do is bring out what they have okay they're, they're just both phenomenal okay so in a way it, it's almost like a, a new band again yes and no it's it, it definitely feels like it's a continuation it's definitely the same vibe mm-hmm. so it's also been just as relaxed as it, it, one thing i always liked about the playing with this band is like i've always been very comfortable um i don't feel like i have to cater to anyone right i don't feel like anyone has any egos Thankfully, no one has any drug problems. Right. So it's 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 much more re- relaxed and, and enjoyable. It sounds yeah. like it. We're all we're all really good friends too, which is for me kind of uncommon actually. Sometimes so. What? Well, sometimes you start off as friends and right. through Just, the process of years and years and kind of button heads over different ideas. You lose that a little bit, and that's the important thing to, to keep in mind always. Is you know we're friends first, and we try to yeah respect each other as we're creating and try to give constructive criticism without well, that's being so, too that, blunt about it. That's sort of the, I guess, downside of creativity. I mean, you, you, you bring something to the table. It's your idea. Uh, you know, you're a little possessive of it, and it does take uh, some finessing to get it all to work. So it helps that you guys uh, have known each other for a long time, and you're at a different stage in your music career than you were uh, you know, a yeah, decade we're teenagers. Ago. Yeah. All right, let's talk about uh, number song number three that we're going to be featuring here on the podcast, Gordon Street. Real quickly, what is that about? And well, uh, Jake actually wrote that one. Okay. Um, from the the vibe I got from what he wrote, it's a lot about just you know we're in a punk rock band. I'm 33. The other guys, uh, the other guys are like a decade younger than me, some of them. So, but they're we're all in our 20s. We're all we're getting old. Uh, they're all in their 20s. They're getting older. It's. You know, it's not as simple as when we were teenagers and mm-hmm. we play a show, act like jerks, have no responsibility, <laughs> sleep it off the next day. Those days are fading they, away. They are long gone. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's it's about how things aren't, at least to me it comes across as about th- how things aren't quite as simple and just trying to figure out where we're going to be when we reach point B. Yeah. You know? Okay. So Very cool. All right, the song is called Gordon Street off the EP Jake Goes to Portland. We're hanging with Seeing Snakes on yourlocalnote.com.
The song is called Gordon Street. Uh, the band is Seeing Snakes, and that's off their uh, latest uh, EP called Jake Goes to Portland. We're hanging with uh, Tim and Brian. Uh, all right, guys, so we've been talking about the songwriting process. Let's talk about how you guys are on stage. Let's describe to people who have never seen you and what will they expect. I guess it depends. Nine times out of ten, it's, you know, we try to be, you know, as high energy as possible. Um, there's one recent show in New York where d- that didn't quite go as planned. Yeah, we um, had some we had some problems <laughs> with the sound and some of the house equipment right. was not and the what we're was, used to playing. And right. We can play on just about anything you throw in front of us, but mm-hmm. one of the spurs on the bass drum wasn't even there. Okay. So it was like wobbling as I was playing it <laughs> on a tiny little riser, and I'm a pretty big guy, so I barely fit. Nice. Behind the drum set on this little riser. So, so you're not too first song into it, the bass drum falls off because <sighs> it only has one out of the two spurs. Nice. The bass cab that we were using was not functioning at all, and the sound guy seemed like he didn't really know how to fix these problems. Didn't know how to fix it or didn't it, care? A uh, little calm A, a little calm B. Kind of ended. He, was, he was trying to help, but I don't think he knew what to do to okay. solve the problem. Oh, that, that's comforting. So that's a rare exception. Usually it's very high energy. We have a few drinks. We have a lot of fun. Yep. Every once in a while it kind of falls apart, but we try to salvage it the best we can. <laughs> that was definitely one for record books. That one ended... Uh, with the guitar being thrown and someone chanting USA. Okay. Um, good times. So, um. <laughs> it's got to be good if it's end- ending with the, you know, the chant of USA. Yeah. Uh, it was an interesting night. <laughs> um, but most of the time, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we try to be high energy. I feel like I probably lose like three pounds after every show. Uh-huh. Mostly because we want to just get as much out of it as, as we possibly can. Like, I really like when I see bands live, I like seeing really high energy, really mm-hmm. uh, just bands that have like a really overwhelming presence. You know, even if it, presence probably is more th- a bigger thing to me than anything else. So I, that's why I want to put out there. Because obviously, if I listen to like a first wave ska band, they're, they're not going to have a lot of energy, but they're going to be, they, they hopefully, they'll have a lot of presence with like big blaring horns right. or whatever. Well, it feels like they, they're happy to be on stage. They're happy that you're there watching them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I get that because there's nothing worse than going to a show and, and it, it, you get the impression that they just want to get done as soon as possible. Yep. So we, we try to just, we try to bring that out every time where it's just, we just want to have as big of an energy uh, as much as possible yeah okay we like to have fun up there and we want the crowd to have fun with us very cool try to interact with them as much as possible tim might tell a couple of bad jokes here and there okay. but uh, it gets the crowd chuckling a little bit mm-hmm. maybe at our expense maybe with us right but right that's good we always have fun all right let's talk about uh where people can get your music well seeing snakes.com is our website www.seeingsnakes.com it takes you right to our Bandcamp page where you can, right now, you can download it for name your price. So if you don't have any money, you can download it for free. If you want to throw us a couple of bucks, put some gas in the tank, we appreciate that too. But we just want everyone to hear the music, so it's out there for name your price. And you guys uh, on uh, social media, Facebook? We do mm-hmm. Facebook. We're not into the Twitter just yet. Uh, All right. I kind of hate the sound of the word hashtag. Like, <laughs> it just bothers me. And now there's all these car commercials yeah. where they're throwing hashtag in front of every word, and I just can't handle that. So, <laughs> yeah, Twitter would probably be bad for us anyway. We we rant a lot, like a lot. So, you think you could get it in under 140 no. characters? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. <laughs> I thought I, 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 please. There might be five I, in a row to get the right. point across. And I'm sure some of it would be misspelled. <laughs> it, or I get to like the first one, and it would end in like half a word. And I'd be like, damn it, I'm done. Just forget it. Um, so yeah, Twitter's probably not. But yeah, Facebook is where you can find all of our random thoughts and updates about shows and that sort of thing. All right, any shows coming up uh, in, in the next few weeks to the end of the year? Well, we have uh, a show out in Westchester at the New Button, which is a really cool house venue, and that's on Friday, November the fifteenth. And we're playing with a couple of cool bands, uh, the Headies. A big, I'm a big fan of them. Cool. I haven't played with them in a little while. And then we will be at JR's in South Philly on Passyunk Ave. That is Saturday, November the 30th. All right. So you have this uh, EP. It's uh, Jake Goes to Portland. It came out in June, roughly? Yeah. Uh, right before we hit the road, we just we had everything recorded, mixed and mastered really quick. And then we just hopped into getting as much put together merch-wise before we went on the road for about four days. 
Right. So, uh, what's your what's your plan for 2014? Uh, more shows out of the area. Uh, more recording. More meeting a lot of band, uh, awesome bands that we like. Uh, we've had a really good run this year, just really checking out some great bands across the board. So, that's one thing I look forward to, and just writing more tunes. Yeah. Excellent. Sure. Uh, let's end with uh, the fourth track off this EP. It's called "Get Stung." What can you tell us about that song? It's you know uh, it, it, I thought I mentioned it earlier. I might be wrong. It, this one's more about like uh, again just trying to appease people, people taking an accusatory tone with you and a reaction to that. It's really quick. I think it only comes in at about a minute and thirty. So that's definitely the fastest song on the. Yeah, and we wrote it pretty quick too. It just kind of came out one day at practice and. Yeah, I think one guy went to the bathroom and we had it finished by the time he got back. <laughs> and how did he feel about that? <laughs> well, he, he jumped right in. He was pretty excited. <laughs> he was like, what was that I was hearing? You... Nice. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a good tune. We uh, we have fun with it. And that's one that always taxes me a little bit when we're playing live. Oh, uh, I bet. That comes along about the middle of the set and I'm already pretty sweaty. So that sweaty. wasn't the one that got the bass drum off the off the riser in New York? No, that that was like the first song <laughs> right away. Like, that place was done. That, that house kit had no business being on anyone's stage. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, Tim, Brian, thanks so much for coming in and spending time with us. Very cool. Thank you guys for having us. Yeah, no thank problem. you very much. Uh, we've been talking with Seeing Snakes. Their latest EP is Jake Goes to Portland. Uh, let me remind you that we have a featured podcast every Monday, and we'll have another one next week. And definitely download our free iPhone and Android apps. Just search YLN at their store, and you can listen to YLN Radio 24-7, playing music exclusive to the Philadelphia area. We're ending the podcast with Get Stung by Seeing Snakes here on yourlocalnote.com. <laughs>